Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice rational equation with complex numbers. What makes this equation nice? I'll tell you in a little bit. But first of all, notice that we have a quartic polynomial divided by a quadratic polynomial. How do you solve rational equations? Good question, right? If you have a rational equation where you need to make a common denominator like this, let's say, then you make a common denominator on the left-hand side, and then you kind of cross-cancel whatever, and then set the numerators equal to each other and solve from there. At the end, you come back and check your solutions because you want to make sure that you don't make any denominator zero, therefore making it undefined, right? So that's what you normally do with real valued rational equations, but this is complex, right? So we gotta be a little bit more careful. First of all, if you do the following, which is called cross multiplication, you're gonna be running into some trouble. Let's think about it, look. You multiply, you get z plus, z to the fourth plus one equals zero. Nice. Okay, if z is real, there are no solutions. But guess what? This channel is all about complex numbers. Did I say that? And also I have another channel called Cyber Math where I focus on algebra, trigonometry, and number theory problems. Today's video is a trigonometric equation. Go ahead and check it out. If you haven't done so, and make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. All right, so z to the fourth plus one equals zero does not have any real solutions, but we're looking for complex solutions. How do you find them? Easy, right? Subtract one and then check the fourth roots of negative one. I say fourth roots because in the complex world, a complex number has four fourth roots. Of course, zero is an exception, right? But every other number, every other complex number has four fourth roots and nth roots in general. If you need the complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. Okay, so how do you find the fourth roots of negative one? Obviously, it's not a real number, so they're all going to be non-real complex. To find it, you can write this in polar form like e to the power, hmm, let's see, I think it's something like i pi, right? But then we kind of have to consider multiples of 2 pi with 2 pi n. And then you can kind of replace n with certain numbers, but before that, let's go ahead and take both sides to the power one fourth, and that would give us i times pi plus two pi n divided by four. And to make it a little easier, uh oh, I forgot the e. To make it a little easier on yourself, you could probably write this a little differently, maybe i times uh, two n plus one pi, and then over four. This basically means that we're looking at odd multiples of pi over four, like 1 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4. Hold on. You don't need to go that far because 2 pi will cycle back. Okay? So that's it. Now, really. Here's one thing you need to be careful about. If you get, like, a, let's say, a pz divided by qz. By the way, pz and qz are polynomials in z is equal to 0. Yes, this implies that pz is 0 for which z values, that's what we're gonna we're trying to find out. But at the same time, and qz does not equal zero. Why? You don't want zero divided by zero, right? Do you? I don't think so. It's an indeterminate form. Some people call it undefined. But I call it indeterminate because we don't know what it is and then we can determine hopefully with limits, right? But we can't write zero, zero as a number. Zero over zero as a number, I'm sorry. But you can write 0 to the power 0 because that's equal to 1. You don't believe that? Go ahead and check my video I made on 0 to the power 0, where I proved that it's equal to 1, like a concrete proof, okay? Anyway, so we have to be careful about these two conditions. What does that mean? Let's go back to our equation and try to interpret the meaning. We have z to the fourth plus 1 divided by z squared plus root z plus 1 equals 0. So we said something like, okay, we want z to the fourth plus one equals zero, and we don't want to be zero. We don't want the second one to be zero. Well, if z is fourth roots of negative one, why would we have to worry about an equation like this? 
right? So here's one thing you can do. We can go ahead and try to find a solution from here and I kind of test it out, okay? So let me rewrite it, e to the power i, 2n plus 1 times pi over 4, something like this. This is z. And now if I replace n with maybe, I don't know, n equals 3 maybe, okay? If n is equal to 3, that's going to give me e to the power, or you know what? I'm going to use n equals 1, I think. I want, I want to get pi, 3 pi over 4, okay? I'll use n equals 1. That's going to give me 3i pi over 4. Nice. This means that the argument is 3 pi over 4. That's going to be cosine 3 pi over 4 plus i sine 3 pi over 4. You probably know these values, right? Cosine is a negative in the second quadrant. And that's going to be negative root 2 over 2. And this will be i times root 2 over 2. Now, do you think this is going to make the second equation 0? Something that we need to test. Let's go ahead and try it out. So in this equation, do you think if I plug this in for z, is that gonna become zero? How do I find out? I can plug it in, right? Like this. I can square this and then I can multiply it by root two and then add one at the end and see if it's zero or not. If not, then we'll take it, okay? How do you square this? A squared is one half. B squared is negative one half because it's I squared is negative one. And then minus two times this times this times I. Okay. Then this will be negative two over two, which is one. This will be plus one I, which is I plus one. Negative one and one are going to cancel out. Nice. This will cancel out. Nice. And then the twos are going to cancel out. Nice. But don't forget the negative sign. That's going to give you and negative 2i plus i, which is negative i. Hmm. Interesting. It didn't make it zero, so it looks like we are in good shape, right? So that should probably be a good solution, but guess what? There are four solutions. Are you going to be checking all of them? I don't think so. There's a better way to do it, and let's talk about the better way to do this thing. So remember what we said about this one and that one not being zero. Remember that, right? I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Factor this expression. Why do we have to worry about uh, the denominator being zero? Because they might have a common factor. Make sense? For example, let me give you a real example, which is easy to understand. In this equation, x equals negative 2 is a solution, but x equals 2 is not a solution because it causes 0 over 0. You see, you don't see it until you factor and cancel it out because this would give you x plus 2 equals 0, but x should not be 0. I mean, x should not be 2, sorry. So, how do you factor z to the fourth plus one? I would say Sophie Germain. How does Sophie Germain work? You add two z squared and subtract it. Nothing changes, right? But why do you do that? For a good reason, because this becomes a perfect square and meh, we can make this a perfect square with some force, okay? Now, this is the difference of two squares and we can kind of write it like this and like this. But then we want to write things in standard form, of course. But guess what? Let's do this in standard form. And then let's also include the denominator. Because guess what? That's going to be awesome. What is the denominator? z squared plus root 2z plus 1. Ta-da! You see the same factor? Uh-huh. That's where it becomes interesting. Set this equal to 0. Now you can go ahead and solve this as a quadratic equation and get the values that are valid because it's not going to cause zero over zero. You see how we eliminated the problem factor? Go away. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve it. Z equals negative B plus minus the square root of B squared, which is 2 minus 4. That's going to give you root 2i divided by 2. And Z should be from here root 2 over 2 plus minus root 2 over 2i. Isn't that one of the solutions that we found and we said that, yay, it will satisfy, or oh, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake, but these are the solutions to our equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.